Let me start with the deniers, the revisionists. The denial or distortion of history is an intentional assault on truth. Understanding the past is crucial to how people understand themselves, their society, and how to achieve their common goals. In July 1995, forces of the army of Republika Srpska, the VRS, invaded the town of Srebrenica in eastern Bosnia and Herzegovina. In a few horrific days, more than 8,000 Bosnian Muslim boys and men were taken to places of detention, abused, tortured, and then executed. As their bodies fell into mass graves, the machinery of denial of those crimes was set into motion. The International Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia, commonly referred to as the ICTY, investigated, prosecuted, and passed judgment on those crimes. The first events that we look at uh, Eastern Bosnia and Srebrenica really start um, in May of 1992 when uh, Karadzic and his um, Bosnian Serb government um, proclaims uh, that they want to be separate from uh, the other ethnic groups. We see the ethnic cleansing uh, beginning with the beginning of the war. By November 1992, there's a struggle over eastern Bosnia, a military struggle. Uh, and we see uh, Mladic's what's called Directive 4, which is an order to militarily defeat um, the Bosnian Muslim forces of Nasser Oric. And in the same order, he says, and remove the civilian population. So when it comes to the events before the fall of Srebrenica, due to the, the fighting between uh, the Muslims and um, the Bosnian Serbs, many people had fled um, to Srebrenica, to the area of Srebrenica. And um, due to the situation, there, the UN decided in 93 to declare the area um, a safe area. Pa u Srebrenici je bilo tada već uh, preko 45.000 ljudi, između 45 i 50.000 ljudi uh, iz svih, znači ovih krajeva iz Cerske konja i Špolja, mjesta koje sam malo prije nabrojao, gore Osatice. Uh, i, uh, Srebrenica postala, postala jedan veliki logor za ljude. Ovaj, to jeste zaista logor bez rešetaka a, okolo i tako sam se ja osjećao. A, i, a, s, pogotovo u tom periodu kada smo bili gladni, nije bilo humanitarne pomoći, bili smo na rubu umiranja od gladi. That's where we are in early 1995 and with Directive 7, Karadzic and Mladic, um, write down that they want to make life unbearable for the Muslims in Srebrenica so that they cannot survive there, which was a, a way of saying, just keep the pressure on them, eventually make it so they'll, uh, they'll have to leave. They were using a strategy of war crimes, as I would put it, uh, committing atrocities deliberately, murdering, raping, uh, forcibly evicting people, simply to be able to get that control of the territory. Following the directive, the enclave of Srebrenica was attacked on 6 July 1995. The Serb forces entered the enclave, which resulted in the Bosnian Muslim population fleeing from 
Srebrenica town to Potocari, where they were seeking refuge at the UN compound. While they were fleeing there, they were also shelled by the Serb forces. And um, eventually there were between 25 to 30,000 people uh, in, in the Potocari compound. Ako kažem da je bila normalna situacija, nije bila normalna situacija. Odjednom ja vidim hiljade ljudi bježe kroz ulice i govore Srebrenica pada. Mi smo živjeli u devetom spratu gore i ja u onaku strahu, mislivši da odmah tog momenta pada Srebrenica, ulazim u tu grupu ljudi i ja bježim. Nisam imao vremena da odem da... Imao sam vremena, ali nisam znao da ima vremena da odim da vidim roditelje i braću, nego uđem u tu masu ljudi. Vjerujte, tako ta uska ulica da hiljade ljudi idu, da jedni gaze preko drugih, tu su čak i krave i konji. Jedna situacija gdje je nemoguće riječima to opisati, da sam ja sebi rekao, pa čovječ, pa ovo je kraj svih krajeva, da propada u neki ambis koji nema kraja. Da govorim sam sebi, pa ovo je san, ovo nije moguće, ali do zadnjeg momenta sam mislio neće Srebrenica nikada pasti. Toliko smo se oslanjali na ujedinje narode. On the 11th of July, the town of Srebrenica did fall to Bosnian Serb forces. Thousands of civilians rushed to nearby Potočari in terror. The people in Potocari were exposed to um, horrific conditions because there was hardly any food and water. Of course, the people got more and more afraid of what would happen next. Ti ljudi odvođeni su i preko cijele noći. Oni su sa ti srpski vojnici, po mom mišljenju, da su bili pojedinci obučeni i u uniforme umprofora i sa lampama. Dolazili su u masu naroda gdje su vidjeli muškarca, jednostavno su im uzimali, odvodili i nisu i nikad išli vratili. Te noći bio je jedan veliki haos. I svake porodice, kad su odvodili te muškarce, čula se vriska, te njegove porodice, djeci, ženi, koga su već imali. A iz pravca ti kuća u kojoj su oni odvodili muškarce, ja... Ne bi tačno znala reći šta se tamo dešavalo, ali jedino su dopirali neki krici. To je djelovalo kao kad gledate neke filmove Strave i užasa. Ali je to bilo tako strašno od tako te atmosfere, od tih krika, od tog ti jauka, ledla vam se krv u žilama, nije niko mogao da spava, niko nije znao šta da radi. While the Muslim population was seeking refuge in Potočari, there were three meetings that took place at the famous Hotel Fontana. During meetings with the local Muslim community, General Mladic delivered a chilling ultimatum. Nema potrebe da ginu baš. Ni vaš muž, ni vaša braća, ni vaše komšite. Dovoljno je da kažete šta želite. I sinovac sam rekao, gospodin, možete opstati ili nestati. After the last meeting at the Hotel Fontana, buses arrived to take the people out of Potočari. What happened was that the VRS separated the men from the women. The women and children and elderly left in the buses and the men were taken away to Bratunac first, where they had to stay in buses overnight. When the men were being uh, taken to the buses, for one, they were not allowed to go back and pick their belongings. 
So they were being put in the buses without their belongings, without the items that they were forced to leave out there. So they were taken towards the buses one by one, like they are prisoners of war. One by one, one following each other with no space in between and soldiers everywhere. And in between the buses, there are soldiers to ensure that one does not cross. So they were all taken in. This was one of the saddest moments that I ever had in that area, in that you could see men, real men crying, asking us, you umprofo, where are you letting these people take us? Why are you letting them go with us? Why do you want us to be killed by these people? And we could ask them, you know, what, what do you think they are going to do to you? And they say, really, these people are going to kill us. Why are they? Why did they in the first place separate us? Thousands of men were actually arrested in, in, um, or held in schools and other locations in Bratunats and then taken to uh, Swanik, where they were also detained in, in several locations before being transported to execution sites on the 13th of July. Can you describe to the judges how the people from Bratnats acted toward the victims from Srebrenica? na muslimanski način i življavali se na njima eto ponižavali at the same time a column of men tried to flee the enclave to muslim held territory pa mi moj otac moj brat moj dajđa i ostali muškarci dječaci Krenuli smo kao žepa, nije pala, možemo u žepu. I došli smo u Goblu nekao, taj meni teren nepoznati, gore u neke šume i primijetili su nas i gađaju artiljerijom. I neko nam je rekao kao žepa je pala, vraćajte se nazad. I gore kad sam došao, to je bio znači, eto, 11. negdje na večer, već mrak. Ide, ljudi se skupljaju, hiljade ljudi, muškaraca, dječaka, bio je mali broj žena, konja, krava, stoke, znači jedan opšti haos. Vjerovatno smo mi iščekivali tu dvojnu intervenciju, a meni to, ja nisam to u tom momentu ni shvatio što se dešava. I došlo je do pucanja. Počeli su da pucaju sa svih strana. Moj dajđa kaže bolje ostati u sredini kolone. Kad se počeli da pucaju, mi smo se razbježali, ali njih više nisam mogao naći. I to je zadnji moment, više nisam nikada vidio, ni oca, ni brata, blizanca, ni dajđu. However, the Serb forces did prevent them from getting there by also calling them um, to come down and surrender, saying nothing would happen to them. Eventually, when men did surrender, they were taken to execution sites and also other detention sites. On the 13th of July, 1995, the planned killing operations began. Thousands of unarmed Bosnian Muslim boys and men were executed in the nearby Bratunak and Zvornik areas, in the Tseska Valley, on the banks of the Yadar River, in Nova Kasaba, the Kravica warehouse, Ora Ovats. Branevo Farm and other locations.
Kada je Brano obratio se nama rekao da će sada da dođu autobusi sa civilima i srebrenci. Ja i pojedinci smo još počeli da prigovaramo zašto, šta mi treba da radimo tu. On je rekao da treba da striljamo te ljude. Tell us what the telegram said. U telegramu je pisalo da se izdvoji jedan vod vojnika koji će biti upotrebljeni za pogubljenje zatvorenika. Where was this telegram sent from, just to be very clear? Mislim da je poslat iz zvorničke brigade, da je dežurni oficir poslao ili neko drugi koji je tad bio u komandi zvorničke brigade. Takođe, ja sam uzeo i pročitao taj telegram Mi smo tad bili zatečeni, to je jednostavno zapanjeni da može tako nešto da se traži od nas. Jednostavno bili smo u šoku. Nismo mogli da vjerujemo da tako nešto može da se uopšte traži od bilo koga. Buses would go to the detention sites and then the men were blindfolded, were taken to sometimes fields where they had to line up. And sometimes when they would arrive at these uh, execution sites, there were already excavators who would then dig the graves for the executed men. Group of 10 ljudi, prvo group of 10 ljudi doveli dole ravno iza ove garaže, možda 100 metara, ne znam, možda više, ali otprilike je tako. Tad je Brano rekao da mi stanemo u stroj, sposobimo u stroj, ispred nas je naređeno ljudima da se nama okrenu leđima. Kad su te ti ljudi okrenuli leđima, mi smo pucali u te ljude, naređeno da se puca u ljude. Čim je kamion krenuo, Rafale su s leđa počeli pucati po nama. Tako da je ova iza mojih leđa pao na ame i ja sam pao po trbuške i tako sam ostao ležeći. Oni su pucali dok je ko javko ili davo znakove života, ono pojedinačno kasnije, kad su svi popadali. Kad je sve bilo zatišti, onda su se oni odmakli, ali nisam smio da gledam nikud kako sam pao, jer mogu me vidjeti da nisam ubijen. I tako sam šutio dok je drugi kamion opet dovezo drugi. Onda je odmaknut od mene bilo možda jedno 5-6 metara da je se zakrenuo tamić pod onom u onom redu u kom smo mi bili. Onda sam malo iskrenuo glavu i gledao sam kako istovaraju i kako ih stroje u četiri reda. I čim je tamić taj kamion krenuo, odmah su pucali po njima rafale i tako su i njiha poubijali i tako je redom trajalo. Možda još koju sekundu da živim. I kada je stvarno došao red na mene i ja sam iskočio sa ostalim, mislim da je četiri čovjeka, bolo me je kamenje po nogama. Kada sam prišao malo bliže, dakle, s desne strane kamiona, vidio sam vrste ubijanih ljudi. Kao da su redani jedna vrsta, pa druga, pa treća. Nisam mogao vidjeti krajeve, ali sam mogao naslutiti u mraku. Mislio sam da moja mama neće nikad znati gdje sam. Kad je mrak, kad su došli oni sa rovokopačima pa po svjetlima ubivali, onda sam ja ostao u zasjenku, malo dalje, možda jedno desetak, petnest metara od tije farova. Onda mene nije osvjetljavalo. Ja sam se izvukao ispod od tije mrtvije i onda sam na leđima prepuzao u kraj mrtvije. Trebalo mi je možda jedno desetak metara 
do kraja. Sili su farove na rovokopačima, mjeseć na ogrijala, razvedrilo se i oni su otišli dole. Onda sam ja ustao i viknuo ima li ko živ, ako ima ko hajmo, ako ne ima didim. Kada smo došli na mjesto, neko je rekao lezite i onako kako smo pošli da ne da legnemo, nego da padamo naprijed. Dakle, leđima smo im bili okrenuti. Počela je pucnjava. Ja se nisam bacio, nego sam pošao da padnem i kasnije ne znam šta se je desilo. Nisam mislio da se bacim, da ostanem živ, to uopšte nisam nikad ni pomislio. Mislio sam da sam završio. There were only a few survivors, um, but luckily we had the chance to hear from survivors um, about the events. It was um, yeah, very touching descriptions of how they felt, the helplessness, and that sometimes men would be so thirsty that all that they could think of was just to have a bit of water before being executed. <laughs> How many people do you estimate, Mr. Adamovich, were executed at the Branjevo farm on the 16th of July? Ja mislim oko 1000-1200. Your your unit the members of the 10th, all of the members who went on this assignment, including Branjo, participated in those executions, did they not? No. As reports of these crimes emerged, the ICTY began to investigate. The investigations were hampered by the secret removal of the executed boys and men from their mass graves and their relocation to secondary or tertiary burial sites to avoid detection. What we mean by secondary graves, um, this is a, a term that was used by the archaeologists um, when they exhumed these large mass graves where the executions took place. They found very few bodies uh, in them. and. Uh, and ha found evidence that the bodies had been removed and taken somewhere else. Um, this is, was determined from the archaeological analysis of the, of the soils, the anthropological analysis of the bodies being hacked in pieces by something like heavy machinery, and by aerial imagery that showed the soil being disturbed in July when the crimes occurred, and then again in September. So secondary graves were the name that was given for the graves where the bodies that were stolen or robbed from the primary graves were taken. And over the years we identified over 50 secondary graves that contained the vast majority of the 6,000 people that we have now identified coming out of mass graves. So again, this was um, an, a concerted action which required a lot of resources and we speak about around 7,000 men who had to be reburied. So that was in an attempt to hide the crimes committed. The identification of the mortal remains found in mass graves was essential to establish the facts of what happened and to offer closure for the families of the missing. The International Commission was established in 1996, originally to secure the cooperation of the governments in the former Yugoslavia to account for the 40,000 persons who went missing as a consequence of the conflicts of the 1990s. So trying to use, um, let's say, traditional methods to identify missing persons cases, which is something that Physicians for Human Rights was valiantly trying to do, meaning taking anti-mortem data from families of the missing and trying to match the anti-mortem data to uh, the skeletal remains, was impossible because the bodies were unrecognizable, they had been so disarticulated. There were five primary graves that we are aware of. Each contained well over a thousand uh, bodies, some more, some less. By December, there were serious negotiations going on at Dayton 
that would uh, potentially allow NATO forces into Bosnia to um, secure the peace. So we believe that in September, when we know that these reburials um, occurred, that there must have been some concern that five big graves could be found, or at least one or more of them could be found, and if they contained a thousand bodies, that would be incredibly damaging to the Bosnian Serb and Serbian cause, and that uh, to prevent that, they should um, rob those graves and spread them out and hide them in isolated places all over eastern Bosnia. The effort to uh, cover up crimes was the most extensive we have ever seen. I mean, I can't now compare that to any other place in the world, but it was massive. Using DNA, we were able to reveal the extent to which these secondary graves existed. Uh, for example, there were bodies so severely disarticulated that it became clear that heavy machinery was used to bulldoze mortal remains from primary sites and remove them, as I said, to multiple secondary sites with DNA, to make one Serbanese identification, on average, we'd have to use about seven DNA match reports, meaning that we'd have one bone sample found in a location X, another one found in location Y, sometimes 50 kilometers away from each other. So this was extensive. The ICMP began the process of reaching out to all families of the missing throughout the region and the world to take reference samples for DNA comparison on a large scale to identify the mortal remains found in mass graves. This is certainly one of the most documented genocides in the history of the world. The victims were identified by the DNA analysis. We gave, as a family, the blood of the blood. The identification was done by the International Commission for Unnestal Persons. Our families were identified by the most popular people. And in that way, we have the international verification. Using DNA proved not only instrumental in being able to identify the victims, and just to give you numbers now, of the 40,000 people that went missing in the region of the former Yugoslavia, over 70% of those individuals have now been accounted for, okay? That is unprecedented. That's never happened ever in the world. With regard to the 8,000, approximately 8,000 persons who went missing from Srebrenica, we have been able to assist Bosnia-Herzegovina in identifying almost 90% of these victims. There were a number of trials before the tribunal that dealt with the events in Srebrenica. Amongst them, there were four trials that only considered the events in Srebrenica, which were the trial against Kerstic, the Blagojevic case, the Popovic case, and the Tolimir case. Apart from these four trials, there was also a case against Razen Erdemovic, who pleaded guilty. And also in the Blagojevic case, two of the accused, Dragan Obrenovic and Mumir Nikolic, pleaded guilty and were sentenced based on these guilty pleas. There are also the trials against Karacic and Mladic, which amongst others also have been accused for the events in Srebrenica. In parallel to the indictments and investigations by the ICTY, authorities in Serbia and Republika Srpska promoted alternative explanations for the crimes. I would say that the crime of Jula was already known in the middle of the situation that happened. Then in Serbia, it was known as the most important part of the propaganda, and that was the effort of reaching out and transferring the responsibility for the crime. Then the whole machinery of the machine was transferred to that, Eto, ali postoji ta nepravda, od uvek istorijska nepravda prema Srbima, se stalno se obtužuje, to obtužuje se sada za Srebrenicu koja je zapravo bila puno oružja, ona je bila jedna, da kažem, skrivena baza vojnika Orića, ali i Zedbegovića. I na taj način je stalno, da kažem, slabdena 
ta činjenična osnova na kojoj šta je urađeno u Srebrnici. Every marker here with a stick with a piece of yellow tag. Every marker here is a bullet casing of some sort. As the investigations and trials progressed, other theories evolved, seeking to deny or diminish the crimes. These denials continue to this day. Vreme će pokazati da je 1. septem 1. jula 1995. u kući jednog muslimana bivšeg predsjednika opštine u Zvorniku gde su pristovala dva predstavnike muslimanske vlade u Sarajevu, predstavnici jedne plaćeničke vojne formacije u sastavu Vojske Republike Srpske, ali ne pod komandom Vojske Republike Srpske, već francuske obaveštajne službe, dogovorili taj zločin, napuštanje Srebrnice i pokolj, And initially, I think some of the um, allegations were that only 100 people died in Srebrenica. That was number one. Uh, then secondly, that there was a, a conflict that took place, that soldiers died on a massive scale and that there was a, a conflict that took place. Um, I've also heard, I think, other stories that when ICMP began working with Thailand to assist persons you know, in identifying missing persons from the Southeast Asian tsunami, that we actually took bodies from Thailand and we buried them in Srebrenica. That's another interesting story. Another one was that, that people went into Bosniak cemeteries in Sarajevo and they removed dead bodies from these uh, cemeteries in Sarajevo and moved them to Srebrenica. So I think the, the narrative about what happened there, either denying the extent to which uh, persons were killed in Srebrenica or fabricating these different scenarios is profound. Pitan Deronića šta se ovo priča o ubistvima i on kaže meni, ništa predsjedniče laži kao i uvek. Kao što kaže podpredsjedniku Koljeviću krajem avgusta lažu, ništa se nije desilo u Srebrenici. I nije se ni desilo u Srebrenici. Meni se skreće pažnja na Srebrenicu i na civile, a nešto što se dešavalo, dešavalo se 80 do 100 km daleko od Srebrenice i ne sa civilima. Sam napad na Srebrenicu nije bio napad na civilno stanovništvo, niti je imao za svi povrdu civilno stanovništvo. Izgleda daleko razumnije da su ubijstva odmazda za nepoštovanje mladićevog zahteva za predaju ili posledica maliciozne odluke za otklanjanje potencijalne opasnosti koju veliki broj zarobljenika predstavlja za vojsku i civilno stanovništvo. The defense over the years have tried to suggest the secondary graves aren't really secondary, that they're primary, that they're battle casualties that uh, were put there, or that they were removed for some sort of health purposes, but there's really never been any significant effort to try to explain that because it's so obvious what, uh, the evidence is so obvious what really happened and why it happened. Pa, ove, kažem, ovdje se nikad ne razgovara o činjenicama. Niti je uh, jedan političar, uh, ni u ove, Miloševićevo, ove, uh, ni tokom nje, suđenja Miloševiću, ni kasnije, ni u vezi ni sa jednom presudom, nije rekao da činjenice koje je utvrdio Haški tribunal da nisu tačne, da su to laži. Uh, uvek je birana jedna druga, da kažem, jedan drugi metod, drugi pristup, da se kaže da je taj Haški tribunal, uh, politički tribunal, da je on protiv Srbije, da se odluke donose protiv Srbije, da se srpski narod hoće da se, uh, da, uh, da se prikazuje kao genocidni narod. I kad se šalje ta poruka uh, ljudima da su oni pripadnici genocidnog naroda, mislim da to ljudima nije... Uh, nije Prijatno, niko ne voli da bude neki pripadnik nekog genocidnog naroda, ali je poruka vrlo vešto stročna i ona se ponavlja ne samo povremeno iz godine u godinu, nego je ona stalna poruka, stalna poruka. Eto, to što su 
neke činjenice utvrđene, to se ovi ne pominje, a se zato pominje ta, da kažem, jedna ideološka boja narodskog tribunala. I want to state clearly that our defense does not deny that large but still unknown number of Muslim men was executed after the fall of Srebrenica in July 1995. It was apparently a serious crime punishable and under both national and international law. <clears throat> However, we strongly deny that such crime amounts to genocide. Similarly, we dispute the charge from paragraph 25 of the indictment that VRS and MOOC forces murdered over 7,000 Muslim men and boys. Our submission is that such allegations have been widely and unnecessarily exaggerated to meet one of the requirements for genocide, genocide church. Ethnic cleansing is not genocide. What happened in July 1995 is that the VRS, the VRS was looking for a piece of land to be in a good position to negotiate. As the ABIH was doing trying to fight in Sarajevo, and as the Croats were doing, fighting for Operation Storm. So what are they arguing then? They're arguing that, the, that a crime against humanity was committed? In what way is a crime against humanity less horrifying than, uh, than genocide? A to važi kao da su Srbi ubili muškaraca i dečaka 8320. A sve sa prirodnim smrtima, za, tri, za četiri godine rata, za pogibijama u borbama za četiri godine rata, sa pogibijama u borbama po šumama, oko Srebrenice, pri nasilnom probijanju kroz, kroz srpske teritorije, oni nisu mogli da identifikuju da sahrane više od, ne znam, dve i po ili tri hiljade ljudi. I onda taj istražni materijal, ovde se sudi ljudima za Srebrenicu, taj istražni materijal ide onako od oka, ne ubijeni su ubijeni osam hiljada. Da vidimo taj materijal, da vidimo DNK. So the work that we did with Mr. Karadic, who was mounting his own defense, where he wanted all the genetic reference samples related to Srebrenica, which were huge. I think the trial chamber in that case uh, ruled that we could you know, work with Mr. Karadic, that he could select 300 cases himself randomly, which he did. And we went back to 1,500 families of the missing, because remember we had to have three reference sample per missing person, to see if they would be willing to provide their genetic information to the alleged perpetrator. So we were able to do that. We met the needs of the defense in these cases. And in each one of these cases, there was irrefutable evidence regarding the identity of this person. The total number of persons killed after the fall of the enclave has also been disputed by defense teams for the accused, as well as by Bosnian Serb officials. Then, based on the evidence as a whole, including forensic evidence and the demographic evidence, it simply cannot be concluded beyond a reasonable doubt that more than 7,000 Muslim men from Srebrenica were killed as a result of the crimes forming the basis of this indictment. Our submissions in our brief clearly show that beyond a reasonable doubt, the maximum number of persons who have been killed as a result of the crimes committed in this case does not exceed 3,000. It's sufficient that thousands of men were killed, whether it's 4,000, 5,000 or 7,000 men. It's sufficient to establish that genocide was committed. However, the sheer number is also not the only criterion and should not be the only criterion to establish genocide. There are other criteria. Priznavanje istine u Srebrenici je neophodno za sve strane. Deo ove istine je da uprkos bolu, uprkos patnji, uprkos gubitku prozrokovanom počinjocima ubistava u Srebrenici, ta dela nisu učinjena sa namenom da se unište u celini ili delimično bosanski muslimani kao grupa. Istina je 
da general Radislav Krstić nije kriv za zločin genocida ili sa učesništvo u genocidu. Some of the criteria that were found by the trial chamber and made it conclude that genocide was committed was the systematic an organized manner with which the killing operation took place. The fact that only Bosnian, Bosnian Muslim men were targeted. Attempts were also made to justify the Srebrenica killings with crimes allegedly committed in the area against Serb civilians. On the takozi jedna mostna poruka bila da kad je rat, da onda svi čine zločine i da zapravo nije tu ni Srbija bila drugačija, ali su i drugi činili zločine i da Srbija traži onda da se kaže da su svi činili zločine. I onda da kažem to na ljude deluje tako da ljudi onda pa kaže jeste, svi su činili zločine. Na praznike hrišćanske Božić slave Ovaj optužen je, i to je jasno, to ima, to postoji, lako je dokazati, ovaj optužen je za sve muslimanske praznike i katoličke praznike izdavao naredbu da se maksimalno uzdržava. A oni su nas i u drugom svjetskom ratu i u ovom ratu na najveće srpske praznike ubijali. Vidjet ćete ovdje šta su radili u Kravici 1993. godine na Božić, to je znači 8-9 mjeseci od izbijanja rata, kako su pokasapili nespreman narod koji je se spremao da slavi i civile i to bez ikakvih razloga. To je bilo napad na civile bez ikakvih razloga. The Kravica Christmas attacks by the, the Muslims um, were the, one of the incidents that the Serb propagandists and others point to as a vicious attack where you know, hundreds and hundreds of civilians were killed. Well, we've re we have the report from the Ratanats Brigade on that attack, and it's not more than I believe 17 or 18 civilians that are killed in the context of a very heavily fought and heavily defended uh, fight over the Kravica area. The actual number of murders that we can prove is, has been very low. It's nothing like the thousands and thousands that we, we saw in Srebrenica. The uh, Center for uh, Research and Demo Documentation in Sarajevo um, has come up with a number of how many victims they can document, and that number is 116. Um, Republika Srpska, in uh, making its uh, official claims, gives a number of 600. Um, the uh, Center for uh, Research on Genocide, based in Belgrade, has offered a number of 1,200, but they haven't told us what that number is based on, or which 1,200 people are being counted. Um, that number is probably invented. But then, this uh, memorial center in Bratunac, um, which could have, I suppose, 116 victims to commemorate, what they have done, um, they have grouped together civilian with military victims in order to increase the number. Um, they have brought in remains of military victims and combined the burial site with a military cemetery that had been previously existing to further inflate the number. Um, they have brought together military victims from other parts of Bosnia and Herzegovina and from previous conflicts so that finally the number of victims that uh, um, are commemorated at Bratunac is around 3,200, and you can see what the strategy is. It's to try to make the number of victims larger and larger so that it looks competitive, although this is a vulgar way of putting it. One of the things that's often said is oh, well, the Srebrenica massacres were revenge uh, for earlier killings of Serbs in Bratunac. Now, I, I'm not sure that that is actually the case, but whether or not it is the case, it's no grounds for carrying out mass murder. Many chambers established that revenge is not a defence and the fact that one group commits crimes against another group doesn't justify 
the other group then in turn to commit crimes against the first group. And um, But I must say in all these years I have seen it repeatedly that the defense has again and again tried to bring that as this is the so-called argument do ut de, so what you do to me you know I will do to you and yeah it has never been I mean considered by the chambers. Ja onda stvarno to jeste i ovi su učinili zločine i oni drugi i oni treći i četvrti učinili su ove zločine ali zato najglasniji su oni uh, koji reaguju kad neko kaže ali da pogledamo koliko je ko zločina napravio, koji zločina, da vidimo te pravne odluke i da vidimo taj činjenice koliki je broj žrtava ratnih zločina. Znači ne vojnika, da vidimo žrtve ratnih zločina. I kada se onda pokaže koliko je zapravo ovaj, Srba, koliko je u odnosu na broj muslimana žrtava ratnih zločina, Onda se zapravo dolazi do tog zaključka, pa i vrlo malo je optuženi s obzirom na toliki broj zločina. Now some on the Serbian side have issued apologies, uh, they've recognized the things that have happened, but frankly it's still possible to find many people who will reject the notion uh, of genocide and even reject the evidence that over 8,000 men and boys were murdered north of Srebrenica in the events in July 1995. Uh, they will say, oh, there was, an, there was something, but it was an exaggeration, uh, maybe 2,000, maybe 1,000. The court record shows very clearly over 8,000 people were killed uh, and uh, uh, somewhere close to 6,000 of those, I believe, have been identified. Uh, the remains of others remain unidentified still, but the remains are there. As the trial and appeal judgments were rendered for crimes in Srebrenica, the facts were established of what happened before, during and after the fall of the enclave. Il faut imaginer des milliers de personnes entassées dans quelques bâtiments, sans eau, sans nourriture. Les témoins ont décrit devant la chambre le climat de terreur qui régnait, les viols, les meurtres, les mauvais traitements, au point que certains réfugiés se sont suicidés ou ont tenté de le faire. Bosnian Muslim prisoners who were captured or surrendered from the column close to Sandici Meadow were marched or transported to the nearby Kravitsa warehouse. What followed this initial killing episode can only be described as a massacre of the prisoners held in the warehouse. Members of the Bosnian Serb forces besieged the prisoners with gunfire and grenades. The assault upon the prisoners lasted through the night. By the end, at least 1,000 Bosnian Muslim men had been killed. Excavators arrived on 14th and 15th of July to remove the bodies. These crimes were committed in little more than one week with a level of brutality and depravity not previously seen in a conflict in the former Yugoslavia and are among the darkest days in modern European history. Loaders and excavators were either already at the site at the time of the executions or arrived soon after to bury the dead in mass graves. In the wake of these mass executions, the Bosnian Serb forces ordered a so-called mopping up operation throughout the enclave and executions on a smaller scale continued in the Zvornik area between the 16th and the 27th of July 1995. Bosnian Serb forces, triggered by a main staff order, took measures to conceal these crimes. A massive reburial operation was set in place. The victims from Kravica warehouse, those killed in Orahovac, Petkovci Dam, Kozluk, Branjevo Farm and Pilica, they had been, that had been buried after their murder, were disinterred and buried again in secondary grave sites at, to name a few, Hojiji Road, the Snagavo Lipje Road, and a total of 12 sites along the Chanchari Road. 
The establishment of the facts of these crimes was aided by the guilty pleas of several of the direct perpetrators. Erdemovich was the first guilty plea, probably the first guilty plea at the tribunal. And what was important about it was the combination of, a, in his case, a VRS soldier acknowledging he was involved in mass murder. That's hugely important for the world to see that there is an acknowledgement from someone inside the criminal system that is doing it. For the, for the naysayers and the deniers of the world to actually see a soldier admit it. So that's hugely important by itself. What was important for the ongoing investigation and trial was also critically important in that Erdemovich told us where it happened, who did it to some degree, uh, the extent of it, and everything he told us was backed up and we were able to corroborate by, uh, by investigation. So that was a huge boost for the investigation. It, it, it put us light years ahead of where we would have been without it. Ne samo ti žrtava što su stradale tada na tom imanju pad, nego svih žrtava, nema veze koje su nacionalnosti, koji su stradali u bivšoj Bosni i Hercegovini. He also agreed uh, in that plea agreement to testify in all Srebrenica trials, and, which he did, and he did beautifully, uh, I will add, and it was never seriously um, contradicted or, or um, hurt by any cross-examination. Svjestan sam da mrtve ne mogu vratiti, da porodicama svojim priznanjem bol ne mogu ublažiti, ali sam ovim činom želio da doprinesem da se napokon sazna potpuna istina o Srebrenici i njenim žrtvama, da državni organi Republike Srpske i svi pojedinci koji su učestvovali u zločinu slede moj put, priznaju svoje učešće i krivicu, predaju se i odgovaraju za ono što su uradili. Several ICTY trial and appeals chambers independently found that the Bosnian Serb forces committed genocide against the Bosnian Muslims in Srebrenica. So the definition of genocide um, comes from the Genocide Convention, which was adopted by the General Assembly in 1948. The statute of the ICTY is actually a verbatim record of um, Article 2 of the Genocide Convention. Article 2 of the Convention defines genocide as any of the following acts committed with intent to destroy, in whole or in part, a national, ethnical, racial or religious group as such, killing members of the group, causing serious bodily or mental harm to members of the group, deliberately inflicting on the group conditions of life calculated to bring about its physical destruction in whole or in part, imposing measures intended to prevent births within the group, forcibly transferring children of the group to another group. These requirements have been found to be customary international law. Un décident de tuer tous les hommes de Srebrenica un âge de combattre, ont décidé de rendre impossible la survie de la population des musulmans de Bosnie à Srebrenica. En d'autres termes, on est passé du nettoyage ethnique au génocide. La Chambre est ainsi convaincue, au-delà de tout Doute raisonnable qu'un crime de génocide a été commis à Srebrenica. Well, once it was determined to be genocide by the Kerstich trial chamber, then it was the appeals chamber's turn in that case to review it. 
they looked very carefully at it and very strictly at it, and they found it to be justified as genocide. So it's a legal determination that is made by the trial chamber and backed up by the appellate chamber. Those who devise and implement genocide seek to deprive humanity of the manifold richness its nationalities, races, ethnicities, and religions provide. This is a crime against all of humankind. Its harm being felt not only by the group targeted for destruction, but by all of humanity. The chamber found that from at least 1994 and throughout July 1995, the accused made numerous statements expressing a need to take revenge on the Bosnian Muslims from Srebrenica, adding that they would have, and I quote, disappeared a long time ago, end of quote, had it not been for the involvement of the international community. He further stated on several occasions during the Hotel Fontana meetings that the Bosnian Muslims from Srebrenica could, and I quote again, live or vanish, end of quote, and, quote again, survive or disappear. For having committed these crimes, the chamber sentences Mr. Ratko Mladic to life imprisonment. The overwhelming evidence in most of those cases against uh, you know, the people that were closest to the killing um, you know, found them guilty of genocide, but always found that there was a, what we call the murder operation to commit mass murder. Well, we've identified the crime scenes and we've identified the victims to an extent that was unimaginable 21 years ago. We have found almost everyone, we've found almost all the sites, and we have convicted the people most responsible for it. We have the most serious and awful crime committed in a four-day period, and we have identified it and, and convicted the people responsible for it. The story is, you know, in terms of the numbers of persons that were killed, I think there's irrefutable evidence. And I think this is where the scientific proof uh, that ICMP provides using DNA um, now cannot be contested. Onda bude jasno zapravo o čemu je reč i čime se treba baviti i koliko je zapravo, koliko je ovde jedne političke zavere, upravo da se ne saznaju činjenice, koliko je strasti u tome da se samo zadrže pozicije, pa makar ponavljanjem, stalno jednog isto, mi smo žrtvo, mi smo žrtve, ali dokle će to biti prihvatljivo? Mislim da to nema neku veliku budućnost. Yeah, we keep here people denying, or Serbia actually denying, that it has happened. And if you ask me as a legal professional and somebody who has analyzed the testimony of hundreds of witnesses who witnessed the events, thousands of documents, I can only say, you know, there is no basis for you to still deny it. If you ask me also as a German, um, looking at what happened in Germany, um, now in particular during the Second World War, the Holocaust, it took us at least two generations to be really able to admit our guilt or to admit what has happened and uh, to confront us with it. So in that sense, I'm also hopeful that at one point the communities will be able to, um, to face it. S druge strane, Haški tribunal je donio niz presuda za genocid, hiljade i hiljade stranica činjenično utvrdiruši šta je se desilo ovdje. Kasnije je sud pravde, sud Bosne i Hercegovine i naravno danas čitav svijet govori o Srebrenici i čitav svijet, hvala Bogu, govori o ovome kao o genocidu. 
oni koji negiraju to njihov problem i trebaju da se suoče sa činjenicom da se desi ovdje genocid zbog sebe, ne zbog nas, zbog njihove djece, a naravno i zbog nas sami, mi nikad se nećemo početi miriti. Proces pomirenja nikada neće istinski početi bez priznanja, istinskog priznanja. Through DNA and other evidence, guilty pleas by some of the perpetrators and testimony from over 1,000 witnesses, the ICTY irrefutably established that the crimes committed after the fall of Srebrenica amounted to genocide. The tribunal also showed that those who commit these crimes will not escape justice and will be held accountable for their actions. Dear revisionists, deniers, you will never succeed in hiding the true nature of this genocide. Your children, your grandchildren will one day realize that the truth of what happened here does not lie in the homes where it has been distorted, but outside where it is readily available. They will discover the truth, the undistorted truth, and when they do, they will wonder what else you have hidden from their view. <laughs>